Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, you guys know I, I shoot film as well as digital when I go out and do my street photography. I mean, I have my cloths right here with me, as you guys can see while I'm out on this trip for the week. And one of the things that as you shoot film, there's, at some point you get exposure to X-Pan or the Fujifilm TX1, basically a panoramic style camera that allows you to use 35 mil film and it puts it in a true panoramic uh, format, if you will, so that you can shoot an experienced film in that type of uh, aspect ratio compared to the normal 35 mil aspect ratio. Um, as you guys know, those cameras are super expensive. Um, uh, in last I checked, anywhere from the four grand and up trying to get a camera body and a lens together. So pretty expensive, pretty expensive. But one of the things that came, I came across about maybe a few weeks ago and looking at another person's channel on the GFX, uh, it's something I thought about when I actually did my recent video on using the GFX 50R for street photography. And I got a lot of good feedback from that. I actually thought, wait a minute, you know, how, how do I get that X-Pan experience without having to have an X-Pan or a Fujifilm TX1? And that's what the GFX, believe it or not, the GFX 50R, the GFX 50, the GFX 100, 100S, all will let you put the camera in the 65 by 24, I believe it is, aspect ratio, which is the same ratio for the uh, Hasselblad X-Pan and the Fujifilm TX1. But for the price, going after, if you can get them, because they're now discontinued, a GFX 50R and the 50 mil lens that's on here, this guy right here, um, you are getting, I believe, a cheaper setup than you would if you went after the 35 mil uh, version with the X-Pan and the, the Fujifilm TX1. And that's just awesome. So you get that aspect ratio. Let me turn it camera around for you guys you can see me hopefully you can see that and let's back up uh, so you can see that aspect ratio is there and for what you can get again if you can find them so that you're looking at possibly use a used GFX 50R and the 50 mil lens because I believe that is the widest that has the smallest profile on the GFX line right now the 30 mil lens that's out does protrude out a little bit farther than this so it's you know it's already a big enough camera as you guys can see much more bigger than the film version that I'm trying to duplicate here but that's always the case of course when you're dealing with digital versus film but it's given me that opportunity to use that format with this camera and experience that that um panoramic at uh, aspect ratio so i'm looking forward to going out with this while i'm up here taking some shots seeing how that is getting used to it and the cool part is is that unlike what i've seen some negatives about having the x-pan and having the tx1 is dealing with that film negative and so forth getting to scan it and things like that this is giving it to me already in a digital format don't have to worry about that it should be easier to deal with so i'll go ahead and post some pics <music> In conclusion guys um, you saw the pictures uh, I thought I did a great job going out just doing a quick run on uh, seeing how the aspect ratio will work with this camera and the X-Pan style with the frame aspect and I love it um, I will say though it, it is gonna take me a minute to get used to shooting in that panoramic style because I generally don't and thought I did a great job 
on a, at the beginning a little rough but a great job as i got into it walking around here around the area i'm at taking some shots so things to consider well one if i set up all my cameras when i do street photography my fuji cameras to do jpeg and raw uh, and the reason why it matters for sure when you're going to do shooting with the gfx camera 50r that is is that the raw will take the full uh, size of the sensor, full aspect ratio, which is, uh, um, I'll have to look at that here real quick so I get it right. And it's so quick, I love the way these cameras come on so fast. Um, but that would be the four by three aspect ratio. If you wanna see that X-Pan aspect ratio and any of the ones other than the four by three on the GFX 50R, you're gonna to have to go to a JPEG where it's burned in. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to take that raw, which is great you have it, to into your editing software and, and crop it to that aspect ratio, which in Capture One is how I would do it. But since I'm traveling right now, I decided to make sure it was doing it on the JPEG and it was. And that is the only caveat, is that if you wanna see it, you have to make sure you are set to shoot in JPEG. I shoot JPEG and RAW to give me that flexibility. And then I reviewed the JPEGs on my second card, which is what I have the JPEGs going to. So all in all, I think it was a great first run of this. If you have the GFX 50R out there, I definitely recommend you give it a try. If you have the 50 out there, I definitely recommend you give it a try. And again, and I didn't say the price earlier because I kind of wanted to get a feel of it first before I said the price. But as again, you guys know, getting an X-Pan um, or getting the Fujifilm TX1 via eBay is what I looked in to do a quick look. Average sold prices, um, you know, you're talking $4,500 to get the body and the lens. Where when you look at the GFX 50R, you're looking at $3,500. Um, about average about two grand to $2,500 for the body. And the lens itself averaged anywhere around 700 to 1,000. So I'm just gonna say 3,500. So you're saving yourself $1,000 getting this over trying to get a you know film version and then you have the film simulations to play with so that you can uh, give yourself that film like quality so that's everything for right now i'm gonna go back out with this later and have some more fun with it see what i can do at night you know it is medium format so that's going to be a, a probably a horrific outing uh, but with that like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video